NASDAQ 100 as we speak, 167 points to the upside. That's almost a full percent. And to talk about some of this market action, folks, let's jump over to our man, Steve Rhodes. Folks, you can check out Steve's outstanding newsletter. Head to the front page of TFNN. You're going to see Mastering Probability right on the front page there. You can click on that. You can subscribe, whether you're talking about the monthly price, 149 the six-month price of 695 you save $199 or 22%. The yearly at 1195 you save 593 Every newsletter, folks, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, so I encourage you to check out some of those longer subscriptions if you're thinking about staying on. And Steve Rhodes, great to talk to you, man. Good afternoon. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. So we got a hot market, but it looks Ooh. like it's going to snow in the Tampa area. It's, I, you know, I was pulling up the weather today where I saw, thankfully by me, Steve, we're going to hit about 45 maybe. So I'm not going to get probably any snow, thankfully. But yeah, I got today. I was got uh, this it's cold, weather. And, and how about the weekend, man? Just amazing weather on Saturday, like 83 degrees, folks. So something amazing. We had Gasparilla around Tampa. I didn't make it, Steve, but we had pool day with Grandpa. So that was cool, too. Oh, cool. Um, but, but pretty, but now pretty, yesterday. pretty. It's 83 degrees, man, down here late January. Pretty, And now we're going to get some snow. Why not? Yeah, but it could, did it cool off yesterday? It was cool enough, but getting kind of cold. It did. It cooled off. It was um, it was still nice, sunny, but cooled off. Yeah, Saturday yeah, well, was the day, man. It was, yeah. I was watching a little bit of the LPGA tournament because it was just uh, just up the street from you, uh, I think, and uh, uh, and you know, it looked like they were pretty cold, the girls, and and looked like quite a bit of wind that was out there. <laughs> As you know, we got to yeah. enjoy some of this cool weather because it gets so hot here, man, pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, and what I love this time it was great sports this weekend. But uh, one of the sports. Now you're you're from the north. Are you a skier or snowboarder? I, uh, oof, I, you know, I haven't been in ages. I was a skier. My dad and I tried snowboarding. It was coming out right as I was like down the end of high school. Where we'd take those trips. We each tried it a couple times. Man, our yeah. butts got got uh, from falling on the back. We love skiing. I used to do the races. I forget. I loved it. So go ahead, yeah, yeah. skiing. Yeah. So I, and I used to ski too. But I I love when the X Games are on. And sure. and they uh, you know they hold them in well they have hold them all around the place but they the X Games in Aspen were on over the weekend and you know there's nothing there's nothing like seeing a beautiful blue sky and all the snow in the mountains and, and it's amazing the balance that uh, that those skiers have and the tricks that they do uh, I'd be dead I'd be dead on the first uh, the first jump I would my back would be breaking in half on the right totally. here, man but I yeah, know totally totally, totally. so talk so to get... me what do you think this is quite every every time a minute goes by we got new highs in this market Steve. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because of the global flow of capital that's uh, coming in here. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But what I thought, okay. thought we could first do is start with uh, uh, this chart here. And this is a chart. This is a 60-year chart of the S&P 500. So it takes us back to 1946. And typically, uh, January closes higher. And then if we take a look at uh, this chart here, if you look at the lower right-hand side, it shows you what the typical average price action is for each month. So this suggests that uh, we could be forming a top here because February uh, typically closes lower. So January is definitely, you know, like we're going to definitely uh, 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 generate a higher close versus December in January. I mean, things would really have to fall off the planet in the next couple of days. And we're approaching sure. one of Bud Rolfe's sure. uh, primary trading range boundary lines at the 4956. So I heard you. I wasn't watching the markets okay. specifically as we're coming up. But we're pretty close to that right now, I guess. Um, yeah, we're you know, at forty nine fifty right now in the S and P yeah. futures. Yeah. So how about that? So so what's interesting is prices coming up into what is typically a resistance or can be a support range out there. Right now we're climbing up into it. So this forty nine fifty six area, it's going to be an interest. Now we don't use it right to the penny, right to the tick, but we're approaching that area as we speak right now. And yeah. if we take a look at this presidential cycle, so what I did was I took that 60-year time frame chart, Tommy, and I went ahead, and because we are in 2024, it's a presidential cycle year, and its patterns can be different. Of course, we have fewer nice. um, years to look at out here. There's 19 years' worth of data in presidential okay. elections since 64. But what we can see here, oddly enough, is that typically uh, right around the end of January, early February, is when the S&P 500 makes its top. And again, this pointed us back to that uh, February time frame. If we take a look at the S&P index um, and the SPY and the ES mini, they each have what I refer to as roads meant to indicator signals, price moving higher doing less relative energy. But in order for those to identify a top, we need to see a bearish reversal candle. So whether you're looking at the SPYs, the S&P, or the ES mini, folks should be watching for and over the course of the next few days, see if we get some type of bearish reversal candle. If we do, likely we're going to have some type of short-term top. Now, the S&P 500, the SPY, they're each going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count top today. 
90 percent of the time when you get to a successful bar number eight which just move up in this last uh, 20 minutes or so has done that it's triggered bar number eight 90 percent of the time it'll go on and generate a proper bar number nine so that suggests we could have a top form between today and wednesday of this week now the es mini is one bar behind that so it might form a top between tomorrow and thursday of this week so between now and thursday it's just a cautionary time period for us to be looking for a top everything's kind of lining up at least at this stage of the game now if that top unfolds uh then price typically moves lower into the middle of march so we'd be looking for a and and, and with a rally that then typically would last uh take us into uh, the september time frame if the S&P 500 is going to begin moving lower, this is what I want people to look for, Tommy, is I want them to pay attention to the spot volatilities, put a 50-day exponential moving average on that. That is the bottom portion of the screen out here. The top portion is the S&P 500. The, air, the boxes that are in green show you how the S&P 500 trades when the spot volatilities is below the 50-day. The red areas show how the S&P 500 trades when, when, when the spot volatilities is above that. So it's one signal to be looking for. As I've identified nice. that there could be a top forming, you, you wouldn't, you want, you're looking for a confirming signal. And that's one of the sure. confirming signals to be able to look for is that spot volatilities. Now, we talked about the market perhaps, if we do get this top, the market will be lower into the uh, March timeframe. Well, weekly tops, uh, in the S&P 500 typically lead to uh, lower weekly closes for two to four weeks. So this tool that I have on here takes a look at, so the black digits are showing you consecutive higher closes, the red digits, which we're really focused on right now, lower consecutive closes. And so these typically last two to three to two to four bars out there. So if we take a look at that, that happens to line up with us moving into the March 1st time frame. We talked about the potential for a March low if we do get this January, February high that kicks in. However, and a little caveat here, on a monthly basis, we've been moving higher. This is going to be our third consecutive month higher. And so that also is a dance step where we typically can see some type of pullback. And on a monthly basis, you can see this has gone back now over, this is 11 years. So I've taken us back to 2012 out here. So you can see how consistent those pullbacks are. It's kind of cool, really, to know that. I mean, I didn't realize this a year ago or six months ago um, until I started looking at this tool that I developed and applied it to the charts this way. But when you really look back at it and say, well, that's pretty cool, right? You know, two-month pullback is pretty much on average. So this could actually take us into the May time frame. And if we expand the presidential cycle, and I just don't do the last 60 years, but I go back to 1928, it turns out that May is one of the worst performing months during the presidential cycle. Yeah. And that's also when we get a bottom. So it goes back to that monthly chart. If we do get a top, it's either they're going to make a low in the March time frame or it's going to be in the May time frame. So I didn't get through all the slides, but I think everybody kind of gets the gist of right now. That was great. Looking for. That was great stuff. And as you were talking, we got to 49.56 in the future. Oh, you gotta so love how about it. that? You gotta love it. How about that? Totally. Steve, great to talk to you, man. I Thanks, look forward Tommy. to the program tomorrow as always, and I'll talk okay. to you soon. Okay. okay, folks, check it out. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.